Faith, Business, and Money is a course we've taught three times now and with a good deal of success. Uh, it's a course that we've taught topically. And it's a, it's a class about economics, but really it's a topical approach to it, which has been good for us. We start out talking about vocation, that is overcoming the dichotomy between sacred and secular work. From there, we look at Old Testament issues, New Testament issues, a theology of work. And only then do we talk about economics. Uh, but even then, it's through the lens of church history. So we talk about pre-modern economies and then modern economies, but how the church has responded to those economies. And from there, we're able to talk about practical issues uh, such as pastoral ethics and missions and fundraising. Uh, it's been successful, in my opinion, for a few reasons. The first reason is that um, it's been super collaborative and it's been a great way to onboard faculty. A lot of people working with the current initiative have struggled to get lots of faculty persons on board. We had 11 instructors teaching this course last time. I'm really proud of that. Uh, so eight instructors internally and then three from the outside. And so 11 of us taught this course. The reason why we were able to do that is because I went to these professors and said, I don't want you to teach about economics. I want you to teach in your field, in your discipline, and just to find a natural bridge into something economic. So, for example, an Old Testament professor might teach on poverty in the ancient Near East, or might teach on uh, that provocative question, is the tithe biblical? And, and things like that professors are able to get into and they can volunteer their time for because they've done most of the work already. I would highly recommend that you have an overseeing professor for a course like this. So the professor is there each week, uh, the professor recruits the speakers, uh, helps them with resources, and most importantly does the grading. And other faculty persons really enjoy that. They get to come in and speak in their area of specialty but it builds towards this common objective about talking about economics. So that's, that's a huge thing for us. It's a great way to onboard faculty. But faith, business, and money has also been successful because we've gotten students on board through very natural entry points into their world. So instead of calling this a class like uh, Christian economics, instead we call it faith, business, and money. Because most students in this area, in the greater Sioux Falls area, we have found want to talk about business. Uh, they're second career people. Our average age for a student is 38. So their second career, they already have business experience. They're already thinking about these issues. And then money. Uh, everybody's thinking about money. Uh, personal finances, what it means to be good stewards in our church, uh, what it means to use our money wisely with uh, uh, development overseas and various projects and missions. People are already thinking about this stuff. I wrote a case dilemma uh, that had to do with a church and its leadership and the interaction they had with their um, congregation and specifically some very involved volunteers um, who were not being really appreciated for what they were bringing to the table uh, given uh, the host of um, experiences and work-life situations they were involved in. From uh, Philippians, I developed a media lesson that tried to address a theology of work um, out of this letter. What I did was look at how Paul um, engages with all of life, um, we could say including work, uh, via a Christological engagement or a theological perspective. And what I came to and brought to the students was that no part of life is exempt from theological reasoning and reflection. And so there is no sacred secular divide that we ought to be importing into our life in the church. And we shouldn't be valuing differently different kinds of work. In the forum discussion around the case, students really picked up on the sacred secular divide that was implicit in the case dilemma. They were also quick to pick up on the lack of realistic expectations for lay leaders who have rich full-time jobs and busy lives and are called to something different than living in the church building. 
Some students offered the valuable insight that lay leaders seasoned in life and work, family and community experiences offer something more valuable than simply hours put in. They bring maturity and wisdom to the church and what it's doing. In the final survey, I asked students how likely it would be that they would teach on this topic in the future based on this interaction we had in the course. Half of the students responded that they were likely or very likely to do so. And that was an encouraging result um, that I um, gleaned from this work. I wanted to leave you with one of the quotations that student, a student left in this final survey for me and for this work. One of the biggest reflection questions for me is thinking about how to talk to those who work a, quote, regular job about jobs and ministry from my place of privilege in relationship to this relationship. I honestly feel as though I lack credibility to speak into this area of others' lives because I get paid to minister. So I was glad that a student really began to wrestle with some big questions on this topic of work with purpose. Once I outlined the way I wanted to develop my theme, I began thinking about ways that I might illustrate the ideas and help the students sense that I really wanted to engage them in a dialogue, albeit a remote one. So once I put my talking points, polished them up, I built a portfolio of photos and sketches in order to engage the student visually as well as orally. I learned how to do video scribing to help moderate that blah 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 syndrome. And then I laid out the presentation in software called Prezi, recorded my comments and screen as I advanced through the presentation. Well, as with other modules in the course, I ask students to engage with each other in discussion on Moodle of what they've learned, what surprised them, what they need to dig into further. From monitoring the discussion boards, this is proving to be fruitful. I ask for feedback regarding the learning experience and one student wrote, wow, this week's videos provide some rich content that I'll always be referring to. It not only provided great information that I need to learn for this course, but it also ministered to my heart. I believe that work, stewardship, and calling are important subjects that needed to be taught more in churches. The matter of stewardship really resonated with me. We are called to be good stewards of what God has entrusted to us, time, talent, money, as Professor Ferris states, for many Christians, stewardship is a money word. In reality, biblical stewardship is a whole life word. What we do is we first of all try to find 15 or so uh, seminary students or alumni who will enroll as students in the course and their task is to learn how to coach somebody to start a business. We would love for them after the course to go back to their church and then replicate this program in their own church. Uh, that's a piece of this that we're not real sure is, is happening. Well, it's not happening as well as we would love it to. Uh, we are learning how to coach people and we're having some successful business startups, but are we getting it replicated in churches? That's something we've got to improve in this course. But Anyway, each of these students uh, who are enrolled in the course, what they do is their first task is to find, recruit a serious uh, wannabe entrepreneur who would like to start a business. Then they start bringing this person to class with them. So actually we have not 15 students, but 15 students and 15 entrepreneurs, something like that every Saturday morning for three hours for like 12 weeks. We begin at the beginning and, and end with uh, a couple of big launch day celebrations where people present their business ideas and all the rest of us give them some critique on the strengths and weaknesses of their proposal and that sort of thing. We have a very uh, robust kind of theological approach to this. So we do a lot of biblical study on uh, the meaning of work and that sort of thing. And then we also have a couple of other 
books we've come to like a lot, we begin by talking about what are the traits of a successful entrepreneur, what, what kind of habits and traits and virtues do you want to seek and cultivate in your own self. Uh, we also are forming community. So this is a course that really is about purpose and character and community, not just about individuals learning techniques and then cut loose to go do it on their own.